Hello everyone, my name is Miranda. I am going to be talking about the Amish subgroups. Um, so we can get started. So when talking about subgroups of Amish, they're basically the groupings of the Amish churches of similar practice. They are the identity of the Amish group, and they are the lifestyle that that Amish group lives. Um, when you think of these Amish subgroups, you can also maybe think of the features that bind them together as a group or an affiliation, um, such as things as small as their dress style, um, their transportation, the use of technology, their style of education, or church practices. So I will touch on 10 subgroups of the Amish. I will start with the five largest and most common or known affiliations in the United States. Um, there are about 40 plus Amish affiliations around the world. Um, I do think it is important that we know and touch a little bit on each of these subgroups within the Amish because these are their values and what they want to be known as. Um, these things are what describes them and separates them from other groups. So I do think it's important that we know and we respect each one of their values and beliefs that come with their Amish subgroup. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the Beachy Amish. First subgroup I'm going to be talking about is the Beachy Amish. They were an Anabaptist church that was formed in 1927 in Pennsylvania. Uh, they follow certain tenets of the Doherty Confession, um, such as foot washing and non-resistance. They were organized by a congregation, and this group is more mission-oriented. Um, they found many congregations around the world, such as Europe, Latin America. They do believe that this mission work stitches the individual churches together and makes them one. Um, the women of the Beachy Amish wear plain clothing. They wear head coverings and um, their dresses are just plain colors. And the men have beards. They are only limited to formal education and they do accept a higher degree of technology, such as automobiles, electricity, telephones in the homes. Um, the churches are held in a specially constructed building. They are not in the homes. Um, something about the Beachy Amish also is that they believe shunning should not happen. They um, are against old orders. And the people who become Mennonite, their more organized approach to Bible study, they include Sunday schools and Bible study groups. And one other thing, they also um, use English in their church services and their Bible studies. And the Beachy Amish was founded by a bishop named Moses M. Beachy. The next Amish subgroup I'm going to be talking about is the Mennonites. Um, one of the class questions was, who are the Mennonites? Are they a subgroup of the Amish? So I added this in here because I'm going to tell you that the Mennonites are a Christian religious group. They originated in the Netherlands and Switzerland in the 1500s, and they are a subgroup of the Amish. Uh, the Mennonites... Um, aspire to create a religious community dedicated to God's word, like in the New Testament. Um, they prefer a simplistic dress code that does not reveal any body features. So, um, distinctive garb and beards, um, simplistic, no patterns, no buttons, anything like that. They do, um, permit ownership of automobiles and the use of electricity. The church meetings are held in the homes and English language is what is spoken during services and they also use audiovisual tools and worship teams during those services. 
The next group is the Old Order Amish, which many of you have learned about pretty um, in-depth in this class. Um, the Old Order Amish are the largest group of rural Amish settlements, about 20 states around the U.S. Um, they are more conservative, so the strict dress rules, they prohibit buttons, zippers, um, they wear dark clothes, mostly black. Um, the men must grow beards at an acceptable length, and the women cannot get their hair cut. Um, they do oppose church buildings. They um, stick to the meetings in the homes. Um, they believe that this is more organic and unregulated. Um, the old order Amish avoid modern technology, like cars and electricity and tractors. Um, they follow the Dutch Mennonite Confession of Faith, which includes shunning of ex-members. The next group is the New Order Amish, which is also a um, pretty relevant topic that we've talked about in this class. Um, this settlement grew out of the Old Order Amish in about the mid-20th century. They are similar, but they do have the slightly relaxed rules um, pertaining to things like dress, technology, and overall socialization. Um, they do have more colorful clothing, and the men were able to trim their beards. They did use modern technology, but to an extent, um, telephones and tractors, and then they did permit airplane travel for certain circumstances. Um, they do promote the born-again experiences among the young people. Um, they do send missionaries into non-Amish churches, as well as accept non-Amish missionaries into their church. Um, but they are stricter than Old Amish when it comes to certain practices, such as alcohol consumption and tobacco use, which I found pretty interesting. All right, the next group is the Scorching Trooper Amish. Um, they are a subset of Older Amish known for being even more strict than the Old Order people, and they also have lower standards of living. Um, they, you can found, find this group in Holmes County, Ohio. Um, they are the largest group of people located there, or group of Amish. They are more isolated from non-Amish people, and they are quick to excommunicate. Um, they have a heavier and more plain dress for women than the Old Order Amish. Um, they don't use any technology. They're not allowed to ride in cars with non-Amish, and there is no in-home plumbing, which obviously obviously means they use outhouses and showers and baths are likely to happen less often. Um, they are restrictive on their reading materials allowed in the home, um, and they follow a more basic school curriculum. The next group is the Brethren Amish. They are of German Pituism and Anabaptist, founded in the German village of Schwarzenau in 1708. Um, this group is influenced by Mennonite. Um, some key values they hold include discipleship, simplicity of life, peacemaking, and just the church as a community or as a whole. Um, they are baptized three times into the church. Um, they have an individualistic approach, um, and they do have few reservations on technology. They place a greater responsibility on the individual themselves to refrain from things that would compromise his or her faith. So basically, they put trust into those people not to explore into anything that would compromise their faith. Um, they do dress plain, but they allow pattern fabrics, and the women did wear head coverings. So the older Amish German Baptists, um, this group was a small group that had split from the main Brethren Church in 1920s. Um, this split did come from a disagreement about automobiles. Um, the 
Old Order German Baptist can be found in Bradford and Covington, Ohio. Um, they are the only other horse and buggy group in the USA besides the Old Order Amish and the Old Order Mennonites. Um, they do have electricity, um, not TV. They use telephones, but there are sword and sheds that are away from the house. Um, the women do dress plain. They wear below the knee dresses with fabric that is small prints of flowers, um, and the men wear dark or black pants with suspenders, plain colored colored shirts, and straw hats. All right, the next group is the Elkhart LaGrange Amish. Um, this is a wide diversity of Amish groups in this area. Um, the Elkhart LaGrange is the largest and oldest Amish settlements in Indiana. Um, they're different from Holmes County in the way that they are one single affiliation um, in their settlement. Uh, they are a more conservative group and they are found on the eastern side of the settlement. So there are differences between the east and the west side of the settlement. Um, some things such as gasoline powered mowers are in the east and then in the um, west you'll find rotating real push mowers. So just the different um, beliefs that the two sides have. Um, the Elkhart LaGrange community is highly oriented towards factory work. So they do not believe solely in um, the farming labor. Um, they do find employment in the local recreational vehicle industry. Um, a lot of people seem to find employment there. Um, their farming has declined to low levels um, due to this work outside of the farm. Um, and something I found interesting and I learned is that they are home to Shipshawana Flea Market. I don't know if any of you have been, but it's a pretty big flea market, and it's pretty well known around this area, so I thought that was pretty neat. When learning about the settlements in Indiana, I found the Napanee Amish. Um, they're located in northern Indiana. They have a similar lifestyle and church to those of the Elkhart LaGrange community. Um, they as well as the Elkhart LaGrange, they are continuing to grow, and there's a theory that they will both grow into each other and become one merged uh, community. Um, so that may bring some confrontation in which practices they will hold on to and let go. So I found that pretty interesting. Um, there wasn't much on this group of Amish. Basically, they hold the same a lot of the same characteristics as the Oak Art and LaGrange communities. So the Swiss Amish arrived in the Midwest in the 1830s. They settled in Adams and Allen counties, which is pretty close to where a lot of us are located. Um, they have a plain appearance, like most Amish, but they do consider themselves distinct from the majority of Amish. Um, they do business together and they cooperate um, when it comes to certain matters, but they, other than that, they don't associate themselves with most Amish affiliations. Um, their language does come off different than most Amish. Um, they also practice yodeling, which many of you probably know what yodeling is, um, which I haven't seen many other Amish groups speak of that, so that was pretty interesting. Um, they do use buggies, but they are only the ones that have tops on them, and they have a conservative use of technology. Um, not all technology is permitted in their group. So one of the questions from the class was the main differences between Amish in Pennsylvania and Amish in Ohio, which is a good question. Um, so the two main groups in, um, in Amish, uh, of the Amish in Pennsylvania and Ohio is um, Lancaster in Pennsylvania and Holmes County in Ohio. So Lancaster County in Pennsylvania is the most Amish populated county in the state um, and Holmes County is the most populated Amish county in Ohio. Um, so I will be discussing 
those two counties and their characteristics. Um, so the Lancaster County, you will see buggies that will be gray, and the use of scooters for transportation is also common, whereas in Holmes County, um, they will have black buggies, and you will see the use of bicycles more often. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, the woman wear heart-shaped caps in Lancaster County, and in Holmes County, the women wear a lampshade-type style. Um, the women in Lancaster County also tend to twist their hair on the sides of their heads when they pin it up, and um, the men have longer hair, which I found interesting because I have seen Amish that have the twisted sides, um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, Lancaster County, they have more stone barns and old farmhouses, whereas Holmes County has many rustic and authentic looking um, Swartz and Trooper type farmsteads. Um, Lancaster County is considered one affiliation. Um, they are uniform in their church practices, whereas Holmes County is made up of 11 different affiliations within their county, um, which I feel like is a lot. Um, Holmes County is overall more Amish, making up almost half of the counties in the population, and Lancaster only makes up about 10% of its county. Um, Holmes County is also more recommended, I found in um, different people's reviews. Um, I guess the community is just overall more laid back, lack of traffic. Personally, I've never been to Holmes County, but I would like to visit and see what that's like. I think that would be pretty cool. Okay, so another question was the Old Amish, Old Order Amish versus the New Order Amish, which I did discuss both of, both of these topics, but um, I also put it side by side, so you can see that Old Order Amish have that more strict style of dress, no patterns, mostly black, and then the New Order Amish are a little bit more back when it comes to the style of dress. They wear the colorful um, clothing. Um, the men must grow a beard and the women cannot cut their hair for the Old Order Amish, which I also touched on. And then for New Order, they were able to trim their beards. Um, Old Order Amish, they oppose the church buildings. They prefer to meet in the house settings, um, whereas the New Order Amish um, are able to meet in specific buildings. Um, so another difference was that the New Order Amish, they permit modern technology to an extent, such as telephones, tractors, and airplane travel, like I mentioned before. Um, the Old Order Amish followed the Dutch Mennonite Confession of Faith, which includes the shunning, whereas the um, New Order Amish aren't as strict when it comes to the shunning, which I do believe they do still practice it. Um, Old Order Amish, like I said, they avoid the technology such as television, automobiles, and tractors. And then the last thing is that the New Order Amish are more strict than Old Armor, Order Amish when it comes to alcohol consumption or tobacco use. Alrighty, so I'm going to wrap up with the last question that was asked. Um, basically the similarities and differences between the Amish and the German Baptists. Um, I, I based these off of the Old Order Amish. Um, so the Old Order German Baptists, they do not practice shunning, um, which is something that Old Order Amish strongly practice, uh, the shunning of ex-members. Um, they both only send their children to school until the eighth grade. Um, they, the Old Order German Baptists are members, they're, ba they're baptized into the church, um, that's something that they do. Um, they also, their church services are held in the uh, English language, and they also, they're about two hour services, and they also provide the Sunday school um, in their churches. And then the Old Order German Baptists use telephones. Like I stated before, they are not located in their homes, but they do use them. Um, another similarity between the Amish and the German Baptists is just their overall style and their 
plain sense of dress. Um, men, same with the men, their plan, their plain dress, and overall, they're both conservative and hold that simplistic um, lifestyle. Um, so that wraps up my presentation. Thank you for listening, and I hope I was able to answer the questions that were posted, and I also hope that you all learned something and enjoyed my summarizing of these 10 Amish subgroups.